Hey, what's up, guys? Vigilant Texan here. Today, we're going to talk about Tartaria, the Grand Tartary, the nation of Tartar, the Tartarian Empire, the great nation of Tartary. And you might be thinking, who the heck is that? I never heard of them in history class. Well, that's correct. <clears throat> so, what do we know? It's a tough topic because, you know, our controllers don't want us to know. Apparently, didn't want us to be familiar with the people who used to rule the world before our current cabal. And I know this is slightly off topic from what I normally talk about, which would be, you know, religion and the Bible and ancient scripture and what we believe and how to worship and that sort of thing. But in the three years that I've taken since making my older set of videos, that whole time I was studying, uh, trying to figure out the truth about whether or not we're supposed to be eating animals, and whether or not the sacrificial system was really in supposed to be in the Bible or not. As I was doing all that research, a very interesting topic began to surface on the internet. And, um, and I'll leave a link to the videos. There was a few key videos that really started to open my eyes to things. And one of them was called The Ether. Um, and I'll link to it. Uh, and then uh, there's a couple of channels who, of YouTube channels, who document their findings on it. Um, one of the first things that I heard about it was so-called mud flood. And if you look up mud flood and research that, you'll find a lot of weird pictures and information about um, some sort of worldwide event that, you know, possibly nuclear, possibly some sort of technology where that they haven't told us they have but some something they use to take out the Tartarians I believe and to take out their base at the North Pole that was so powerful that when it exploded it, right under Polaris in the North Pole it caused a ripple of earth like a almost like a tsunami with, with water except with earth and so you have the, you know, let's, since we got maps today, one of the things we're going to look at, I want to show you sort of what I'm talking about. Oh my geez. We're supposed to be in, here we go, maps. So if you picture the middle there, <coughs> here we are in our world. picture something see because if you go to the North Pole now it's just like a barren flatland of nothingness and that kind of makes no sense with with it being in the center of the world so here you have uh, your map of the world and you, this right now is just kind of barren nothingless but it, I believe that um, if you look at where was that one map the oldest map we have of ever uh, darn it, I thought I had it. Shows land around the North Pole. If you look at the, um, uh, original map of Eden and Four Rivers. Should be easy to find. You would think. <laughs> Anyway, it's a, oh, here it is. So in this map, it shows the four rivers coming out of Eden and the North Pole, and that around the North Pole, there's all this land, right? But if we go, oh, yeah, here, look, here's different versions of it. See, they're showing these land. This is the map I was looking for. The land that's there. Well, if you look at here now, where did it go? It's just kind of like an empty... Uh, kind of barren wasteland now if you go and 
Google Maps and the, the North Pole, the true North Pole, there's like nothing there. So I think there could have been a Tartarian base there and that when they blew that up, it caused like a ripple effect it's because if you know, I've, I've seen more mud flood evidence on the northern uh, coastlines of all the continents, although there is evidence in some of the southern parts of the continents, it seems to be most um, aware, uh, most evident in there. And when you're at, when you're thinking, well, wh what would be evidence of a mud flood? Well, for instance, if you have a building and the whole bottom floor of the building is covered in um, oh, there's the one of Eden I was looking for. It's here in my Tartary maps. I put it in here so I'd have it today and then forgot it was in there. <laughs> um, you see these buildings that have the, the bottom floors covered in earth. Let me see if I can get to some here. This is my page. So that was the other thing I wanted to introduce today was that I've been having, I've had this Facebook page for about the last couple of two, three years since I started studying this topic where I've been cataloging all of these ancient buildings that definitely look like they've been there be long before the current people living there and looks like the current people living there, there's no way they would have been able to build those buildings, especially in the time frame. And I've sorted it into albums with the different locations. But let me quickly see if I can show you what I would consider clear evidence of a building that has been mud flooded. Um, okay, here you go. See, look at the side. See how the see how this you see there's just the tops of the windows here. Just the tops of the windows. See see these windows? So as you can see, there's an entire bottom floor of this church that's covered. Look here, the mud, the, this church was here, and the, in comes the, like, I would be willing to bet this is north and, and that's south, and in comes all the, the earth and, and just, boom. So you can see the earth just covering up, because there's no way if this was the true, uh, if this was where the earth was, you wouldn't dig down in in and build a basement like that it makes no sense <laughs> look at that the the real entrance is probably way down here the original doors and then they had to build this little walkway up and go in make a door that goes into a window <laughs> so you can get inside of it um i think in that american midwest there was some really good ones there go back to my albums. Okay, American Midwest. Actually not. But what you'll see is um, basically the bottom floors of the buildings covered up. Yeah, look, here's, here's one. Notice how there's a whole nother floor down below and the earth just whoosh, slopes down like you wouldn't build that way. Here's, one. Here's the tops of the windows. <coughs> you wouldn't just like clearly something happened that brought the earth in to envelop the bottom of the building. Um, so we have, okay, here's what we have. When you go to Wikipedia and you just look up Wikipedia Tar Tartaria, Tartary, hmm. let's see what our controllers want us to know. According to them, the Tartary was a blanket term used in Western European literature and cartography for a vast part of Asia bounded by the Caspian Sea, Euro Mountains, and Pacific Oceans. So they have no, if you look, if you read through here, they'll say that it was 
part of Russia and part of China, but that it was, they don't give you any names, they don't give you any pictures, they don't give you any leaders, any kings, and that's it. Two or three paragraphs. Okay, so there was some land in Russia and part of China, and they give this one map. And that they say the Tartary is the yellow parts, and the and the other rest of it was China or what? I mean, the the yellow was the China part, and this purple part in the middle. So they admit that there was something, there was something called Tartary. They don't even look. They don't even call it. They just call it a vast land. They don't even call it a nation. They don't even give it credit with being independent nation. It's just oh, it's just a piece of land, but. This is what they want you to, this is what they want us to think Tartary was. But when you look on the, the maps, if you look at ancient maps of Tartary, see, we go, we find, see, because here's the thing you go back and you get maps from the 1600s, from the 1500s, from the 1200s, go way back. And these maps are like printed out maps or paintings. You can't change them, you can't go back and rewrite a map. Okay, once it's printed out, boom, there it is. And the thing is, when you look at these maps, Tartary is, you know, labeled as an independent state. Here, let's see. The Great, the great Tartary. Hmm? And then according to this, they had all of Russia and China. This is the new map of Tartary. Look, they had all of this. The north part of Europe, all of Russia and China, was all theirs. Here's a little excerpt I found in a CIA document. Or let us take the matter of history, which, along with religion, language, and literature, constitute the core of people's cultural heritage. Here again, the communists have interfered in a shameless manner. For example, on 9 August 1944, the Central Committee of the Communist Party, sitting in Moscow, issued a directive ordering the party's Tartar Provincial Committee to proceed to a scientific revision of the history of Tartaria to liquidate serious shortcomings and mistakes of the nationalistic character committed by individual writers and historians in dealing with Tartary history. In other words, Tartar history was to be rewritten. Let us be frank was to be falsified in order to eliminate references to Great Russia aggressions and to hide the facts of the real course of Tartar-Russian relations. And this was no isolated case. In every Muslim area within the USSR, historians on orders of the Communist Party have rewritten history to distort the facts so that the Russian Russians appear always in good light. Needless to say, histories which present the facts truthfully have been withdrawn and destroyed so that the present and future generations of Muslims are forever denied the chance of learning the true facts of their nation's past. And that's one of the things I'm starting to learn is that Tartary was, may have been a Muslim nation. See, so look here on this one. They own a huge, huge chunk of that. And some of these are hard to see because they you don't get a whole lot of... Um, uh, low quality photos from the uh, from the web. Look, independent Tartary, <laughs> and they all of that is theirs. Here's an excerpt from the Tsarist Empire. It says the Moscow princes defeated the Tartars and founded an empire. The first purely Slav state earned the end of the 19th, 9th century around Kiev. It lasted until the 13th century when the Tartar Golden Horde swept across the steppe from Mongolia. For two and a half centuries, the Tartar overlords extracted tribute from the Russian people. They extinguished much of Russia's town life with its industry and commerce, condemning her to remain Algerian, ag agrarian. Worst of all, they cut her off from Western Europe just when the great period of Renaissance progress was beginning, deprived of the commercial, technological, and humanist advances of Western Europe, Russia took despotic course. The Tartars befriended the princes of Moscow because they were zealous in squeezing tribute from the people. With, Tartars, with Tartar support, these princes steadily extended their Moscovite state, and when at length the Tartar Empire weakened a Moscow prince, Ivan the Great. 
attack the Tartars, completing the unification of an empire based out of Moscow and became the first in a long line of Russian. The rulers of Moscow assumed the title Tsar was from Caesar, but it was actually from the Tartarian Tsars. So here's a map that's saying that all a bit of each continent was Tartars. This one too, we have Tartarian empires in America. And we have, look at here, a map of America where California is an island. This is all New Mexico. And the United States is only half of it up here. Interesting. So, <coughs> yeah, here's California as an island. Interesting. Not something they told us in history. Map. Novus Totius Terranium. It's got all this up here. Tartaria. 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 So that huge country was all Tartary. There's evidence that the Great Wall of China was actually the Great Tartarian Wall. If you go and look at it, the actual entrances are on the wrong side. <laughs> They're facing out or in instead of out. So that it, if, you, if it's the Great Wall of China, then why is it that on the border the entrances and everything face the wrong direction? Well, we believe it was the Great Wall of Tartarians. And it's like, well, you know, my friends ask me, well, you know, what good does it do us to know that they lied about history? Well, it does you a lot of good, you, you know, because if you don't understand that these people that are in control have the ability to rewrite and change history and reset things, then you'll be ripe to have that happen to you. And I'm sure the people because there's evidence that our our reality was reset as recently as the late 1800s and that a lot of these um, expositions that they were put on in the late 1800s and 1900s were actually that we had just destroyed the Tartarian Empire and there was all this Freemasonry left behind from all their buildings and stuff that they left everywhere. And so they basically just got to run and go claim them all the gold rush of the, of, of, of the 1800s is basically just to go claim all this, all these states, all these buildings. It's like, okay, the Tartars are gone. They left all their awesome churches and buildings behind. The first ones to get over there in your horse and buggy gets to have them. And then, sorry, my throat's a little dry. And then when you look at the, the stories of how these buildings were built, none of them make any sense. You know, how, how are they going to build something like this with no, no motors, you know, no, uh, <laughs> like pick, pickaxes, you know, the, the tools that we supposedly had in the 1700s, you couldn't build things like this. There's no way 1800. Look how big the door is compared to the person there. These were buildings that were left behind by the Tartarian Empire. And we just took them. There's the Leaning Tower of Pisa over there. I'm just going to flip through some of these. When you, look, when you look at the stories of how these buildings got here, the stories are always just fanciful. Make believe. Roman nipples. Let's see. Look how small that lady looks. There's no way these people built these things. And the thing is, they're in all continents. That's kind of what I was proving with these albums. I went and showed that there's these buildings and all. Okay, so you got North Africa, New Zealand. Sorry. 
Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, France, Italy, American Midwest, South America, Scandinavia, Michigan, <laughs> Connecticut, Switzerland, Poland, China, Quebec, Italy, Canada, British Columbia, San Diego, Casper, Wyoming. Here's some interesting photos I found from Seattle. Supposedly this was a rebuilding and reconstruction and re-landscaping re Seattle. But if you look at the photos, what in the world is going on here? Like, what? What? You know, it to me it's like they landed on the East Coast, they finally made their way out west here, and they find these cities that are just in disarray. They've been destroyed by a mud flood. But there's there's some nice look at that one through the back there. Look at this 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 house just sitting up here that just made it. Just happened to survive. And then the one sitting down there that didn't. I mean, just ridiculous. What happened here? What happened here look at that here they are just dragging boatloads of dirt away like really Seattle the explanations they give for these things really are, are just just fanciful so anyway you got all these wars that took place right at the end of the late 1700s and 1800s and all these plagues and all these you got orphan trains and incubator babies and like it would appear that and then and then there's all these references to the old world and the old Victorian age and and the old renaissance of the, you know but it doesn't make any sense with the timeline they give us of when these things were invented and what these technologies were that they that they used to uh, to build these things you know and you might think to yourself oh come on there's there's too much history um, that you know there's too many people that have evidence of these of the history that we have and you know they have these things really happened they were documented right and like what you got to understand is these things can be falsified you know what I mean um, let's see and the, re the way they can falsify these things is this right here. The cult of Baal. I noticed this photo circulating around the internet again in the last um, few weeks, even though I first encountered it back in 2020, mid-2020. And you can't read it very good because this is not, you have to pay like, I forget how much money to get the clear copy of this. But you can see, you can make out just enough. This is Baal worship and human sacrifice and, and, and killing and eating animals is what the cult of Baal runs on. Like death and blood and adrenal chrome and human trafficking and blood sacrifices and occultic satanic rituals. And it all started with the Canaanites worshiping Baal, sacrificing humans and babies for fertility. You have the early Sumerians, the Canaanites, who later became the Phoenicians and the Sumerians, okay? Osiris and Nimrod here. Then you have the pharaohs of Egypt ruling over this side. You have the kings of Babylon. So you go from the ancient times, just getting off the boat from the flood, and you got nowhere listed in here is the progeny of you know, Adam and Noah's family. They're the they're the good ones. <laughs> this is how this is how long the evils existed, and this is what they've had control of. So the Canaanites, who became the Phoenicians or Sumerians, split into two kind of wings. You have the Egyptians and the Babylonians, who both fought with each other and ruled at different times. But it's kind of like the Democrats and the Republicans. It doesn't matter. They're both evil. Like, neither one has our best interest in mind. They're all here to enslave us and just keep us, shorten our lives and take all of our resources and tax us to death. So anyways, then you had King Solomon, the Tablets of Law from Moses, the, the Tablets of Inky from the Pharaohs. You have the Roman Empire, the introduction of monotheism, the... 
development of the Judean Empire. Then monotheism, the Vatican, you have the Messiah comes, Sol Invictus, the Holy See, and then they take the, all the books out of the Bible, whittle it down to 66 books, and then they use the Crusades and the Dark Ages to, I believe, go and get rid of all of the evidence of... Um, you know the previous empires and then you have the Knights Templar the Khazars the Kabbalah and then the introduction of the black nobility the court of the Jews Switzerland 1291 then eventually the Knights Templar and the Khazars and they create the Masons which were all there was always the schools of mystery all the way back here from the the um, Egyptians and Babylonians they had their mystery schools it was all occult but they didn't actually come out and like say who they were and come out in the open that's kind of what the Masons Jesuits and the Illuminati even though they do operate in secret they're the ones that are currently ruling our world and then eventually the crown jewel of all that was the United States of America and the creation of the central banks being ruled from Britain. You have the obelisk in Britain, you have the obelisk in Washington DC, and you have the obelisk in the Vatican. Those are the three, um, it's like the kind of the three-headed monster there. You got the Vatican in charge of religion. You have the British in charge of the banks and the money, and you have the USA as the military arm that does all the taking out of the other countries. If you look at countries without a central bank, you only have these left. Adora, the Isle of Man. Let's see. I mean, just like the, the only countries that there's barely any. <laughs> the Rothschild family. Okay, so here they are. Yes, these are the only countries left without central banks. The last ones to have fallen. I could have sworn Northern Korea was one of them too. <clears throat> but if you go back and look, the ones who didn't have a central bank were like Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, all the countries that we just recently went to war with. Like um, Saddam Hussein, in his rule, his country, they refused to... To, to put in a central bank and they supposedly had nukes and what did we do we go in there we take out their leadership we install a central bank and we reprint their money and what do you know now they have brand new money and they're in the beast system with us so you have this cult of Baal and their beast system and their banking system and they run the religions of the world you have the um, the Jesuits who infiltrated all the different religions ever since the 1500s. They infiltrated all the schools. There's all these um, universities that admit to being Jesuit run universities. And then there's all the other ones that just teach the same thing they teach, even though they don't, they're not actual Jesuit, Jesuit universities. The curriculum is the same. So, so if, you know, if you remember when the Messiah came, you know, supposedly the devil takes him up to a high place and says, "Well, you know, if you'll just worship me, if you'll just, you'll just kneel down to me. I'll give you, you know, you can rule all these, all the, you know, nations of the world." And so, at that time, you know, Satan had control of all the nations of the world, and according to this, that would be true, <laughs> because you only had Egypt and Babylon. And then you have, you know, is the Israel, and you know, there's only so many different influences in our in our world of thought and the the things we believe. And if the powers that be have had control over all these things and the media, and you know, I'm sure you've heard that, you know, all of our media is owned by six corporations, and those six corporations are only owned by this many, you know, people, wealthy people, 
and it's true. And you can see it with what they did with this last election. I think it was pretty clear that they tampered with the election and they just basically, I mean, you know, Trump came in and supposedly tried to, you know, drain the swamps or whatever and get rid of some of this evil cabal, this cult of ball. And, uh, and, you know, I'm not a Trumper. I believe he's probably was just a puppet and a tool, but he may have been representing some sort of, you know, people who want to get rid of this current cabal of people in control. And boy, what did we find out? <laughs> yeah, right. The cabal is in control <laughs> and it is straightforward. Now, this whole thing about a new world order coming, uh, brother, the new world order is already here. It has been in place. Like we had this whole world has been run by one group of people for a good, good long time. It's at least since 1776, at least since the forming of the United States, at least since Washington D.C since George Washington. I mean, that since that time there, it's definitely been controlled by one people, and those people did not want us to know who the Tartarians were. Why do you say? Well, one thing we've learned about Tartaria is these cathedrals were actually places of healing. They had these resonance windows, and they all had these antennas on top, and they, could, they were also power plants. So they could harness, just like uh, Tesla, or boy, I don't know. Tesla's an interesting uh, uh, figure, but supposedly what he proved was this type of energy source that you can just gather energy from the ether. Um, if you'll notice that a lot of the buildings in in large cities have these sprites on top that are made to to catch the um, lightning strikes and gather electrical energy. We've recently learned that bricks can hold an electrical current um, bricks and rocks and especially red bricks and um, that these these churches these cathedrals these cath cathode roll there that they um, they would have they the pipe organs that are in them those huge organs that we now know that that you the vibrations heal you um, the other thing I've gotten into uh, in the past three years is, is tuning all my music down to 432 hertz. Uh, turns out that 44k hertz, that they, the musical standard, they changed to uh, about, about 100 years ago. What do you know? Uh, doesn't vibrate with you very well, and if you tune it down to 432 hertz, it, it makes a much better vibrational energy. Um, if you look at that if some of the things that people are starting to learn is that they may have inserted some time in there a lot of times we find these places where the date is written on the sides of buildings and stuff and it'll have an i or a j instead of a one and it'll be like j746 but then later on when we look at what the controllers are telling us is the truth They'll say, well, that was 1776, when really it said J776. So there could be that they have fabricated in a bunch of extra history. Now, here's what I can tell you for sure. If you look up Masonic Sacred History, volume of that, is that it? Masonic, Masonic ritual and Freemason sacred space in America. Freemasonry, pagan history. <coughs> that each year all these Masons get together and they all get dressed up fancy and they all go to this. I think it's, man, I don't know, I think it's some lodge in England or Scotland maybe. And they do this big, like, hubbub of their history um, and how this person discovered that and this person invented that and and so it's pretty clear that though they're the ones who have come up with this current history that we've been told is our history and it's pretty clear that it's not actually true that definitely parts of it have been fabricated I think that here's an here's an interesting thing that I was thinking about today when I was getting ready to record this video is that it's interesting when you notice that a lot of historical writers and especially 
biblical authors and writers of sacred scriptures because I'll notice when I'm reading in an ancient text many times when they tell you about something that happened they'll say well it was during the reign of this and this king and I thought wow how inge how genius that is because if you if you could because being during the reign of a king puts you in a certain time period without having to use a date because if the names and dates have been changed I mean we know that when the Gregorian calendar was put in and before that the Julian calendar that there was a lot of hubbub and upheaval about well why are we going to a different calendar another thing we know for sure is that the lunisolar calendar is uh, doesn't match up with what we're following the Gregorian and uh, one of the um, there's a website that I like world's last chance that seem to be pretty awake on a lot of things and they have a calendar that you can go to Psh, they used to <laughs> where's the calendar I know you can get an app, but basically, um, if you if you start your days with the you know and your months with the based on the sun and moon's rotation, that you come up with the Sabbath being on different days than what's on the Gregorian calendar. And I, since I've been using this calendar for my appointed times for doing Passover and you know Day of Atonement. Feast of Weeks and all those different things. That a lot of times those those dates don't actually don't actually match up. Like I'll be celebrating my Passover like a week before all the pagans do their Easter or whatever Ishtar. And so it's if they're if they're they have the ability to change that sort of thing, then they could easily have changed <clears throat> the dates. They could have easily inserted some extra years. I mean, look at this thing. There's no way these people built this. <laughs> With horse and buggy. And, you know, where would they quarry the stones at? How would they, if there was no more, if there was no engines and no machinery, how did they make all the concrete to pour in? These are clearly not hewn stone. How? Anyway, I will get off on a rabbit trail. <laughs> so anyway, I just kind of wanted to just, you know, let y'all know what I've been studying. Maybe put you on a rabbit trail. Um, link you to my Facebook research of this topic, and just let you know that we've been lied to about our history too, and. That and I'll, and I'll put you on some YouTube channels. There's some guys doing a really great job of researching this. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. I may mention it here and there, but I'm still going to try to focus most of my efforts on, you know, uncovering the history of religion and you know where the Bible's been tempered, tampered with. I'm going to do a couple more teachings, specifically separate ones on the correctors of the Nicene Council, and then also the Babylonian priests. I'm just going to kind of dig a little bit more in depth than I was able to in the in the man was not designed to eat animals. I'm also going to re-record that one now that I have this nice, um, better setup here. Now, if you'll notice my little garden back there, I have an indoor garden that I'm uh, bought bought this little you know hydroponic indoor. It's cool. The lights lower up and down. It's got like a uh, a pet, uh, you know, electronic thing up there that tells you when to add food and when, and you know, keeps track of the water levels and and uh, it's pretty cool. I already got some greens growing and some cherry tomatoes. What I'm going to try to do is have basically um, be able to come in here and just pick like a a, a bowl of greens and and cherries and and have a salad that's just straight off the plant. And uh, you know, I mean. It's pretty cheap. The kits, the kits are kind of expensive, but you can reuse the little pods. I'm just so I, you can just order cheap seeds, and I'm just gonna try to do greens and cherry, cherry tomatoes, and I've got some herbs, and pretty, pretty cool. So anyway, 
I'm going to re-record the uh, Man Was Not Designed to Eat Animals because I know that was kind of a, the audio was bad and my dog was bugging me and really that's like the most important video. So definitely going to do a better version of that, but just wanted to say hi, drop a couple of uh, seed, plant a few seeds, just let you know what you might need to be researching, show you my Facebook page with my collection of things that I've been working on. And uh, hope you guys are having a good Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. See you next time.